Hi, this is a very selective word study on the word ruach. Uh, it's selective because I'm just looking at the word ruach in Genesis. This is a sample uh, word study um, to give you a, 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 tense, a sense of how I do word studies. By the way, it may not look like ruach, but this is, after all, a Hebrew word. And other languages have letters we don't have in English, and other languages have sounds we don't have in English. And so uh, this is uh, this H here, sometimes it's written with a dot under it, uh, is chet. Uh, we don't have that letter in English. Um, and sometimes this is actually written ch to try to get at the ch sound, um, but it is not uh, ch. Hebrew has no ch sound. Never say Melchizedek. Don't let me ever catch you saying Melchizedek. I hate it when people say Melchizedek. There is no ch sound in Hebrew. It's Melchizedek, Ch, Melchizedek, you know, anyway. But anyway, I'm not even saying it right if I were to say it in Hebrew. But that's, if you're going to bring it into English, say Melchizedek. So this is Ruach, um, which is a word that basically, let's, let's say it means breath. Now, in my study of Genesis, I'm going to find out that breath maybe isn't the number one way the word is used in Genesis. But I'm going to use that as my starter definition to get us out of our assumptions. Without realizing it, we read our modern uh, cultural and theological assumptions into Genesis. But of course, Genesis wasn't written to us, and it wasn't written in our categories. God is an incarnating God. God is a God who takes on the flesh of the people he's speaking to. And when God revealed Genesis, he was not speaking to me directly, indirectly. He is. It's for me. But he was speaking directly to ancient Israel that spoke Hebrew. Um, and so I put breath here to try to break us out of our assumptions because it's oh so easy for us just to say, oh, well, this word means spirit. And then we download all of this stuff from our modern understanding of what spirit is into Genesis when that's just, you know, we can't assume at all that that's the way the Hebrew word ruach uh, functioned um, in its language. So I'm going to start with breath to break us out of our cultural and theological assumptions uh, that are that make for eisegesis rather than exegesis. Exegesis is listening to the text. Eisegesis is kind of reading what we already think into the text. So let's start with the occurrences of Ruach in Genesis. What we're going to do, as you know, is we're going to try to discern distinct meanings that this word can have, and then we're going to construct a dictionary entry by the end of the video. So the first occurrence of this is in Genesis 1-2, the Ruach of God was moving over the face of the waters. Now, just from this verse alone, you know, if I empty my mind of all my assumptions and I ask inductively, inductive Bible study, you know, what does Ruach mean here? I, I actually am not sure. From this verse all by itself, I'm not really sure what Ruach means. Does it mean the breath of God was moving over the face of the waters? I think the new RSV says, a wind from God was moving over the face of the waters. That one is possible, to be honest. Um, I think in the end I'm going to go with the traditional, the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters, but I'm going to put a small s. I'm going to put a small s because I guarantee you that Moses did not understand the Holy Spirit. The Trinitarian third person of the Trinity, that doesn't uh, get understood until um, later on. Uh, and so it would be anachronistic to capitalize S here uh, if we're reading it in context. You know, when we're reading it theologically, capitalize the S, go away. Uh, go ahead, I mean. Uh, but if, if we're trying to read Genesis on its own terms, let's not capitalize the S because we don't know that yet. Uh, not in Genesis, in my opinion. Okay, so I'm going to eventually define this as, as a spirit. But when I was doing it the first time, I wasn't sure just from looking at this. I left question marks. Um, come back to later. Okay, so um, in Genesis 3.8, Adam and Eve hear God in the Ruach of the day. This is an, what I call an aha uh, instance because this is not your mother's spirit. Um, this is a, a different kind of, uh, of, of spirit here. It's usually translated the cool of the day. Um, it's something like a breeze or a wind, the breath of the day. I assume it means, you know, after the sun is going down, uh, maybe maybe it's still light out, but the sun is is not, you know, providing much as much heat, and so it gets cool. It cools down. 
Um, and so I'm going to go with wind or breeze uh, for this. And like I said, this is an aha verse for me. There are certain verses that really crystallize one of the definitions of a word. And for me, this verse is so different from my assumptions. What, the, God? they heard God in the spirit of the day? What does this mean? Well, it's just a different meaning for the word, a distinct meaning that deserves its own dictionary entry. And so I'm going with wind or breeze as a, as a, as a clear, one of the clear definitions of the word ruach in Genesis. Okay, Genesis 6.3. Uh, God says, my ruach will not quarrel with humanity forever, for he is flesh and his days are, are 120 years. The sense here, uh, in the way I've left it, and the way I think most translated, is that God is saying, I don't have to quarrel with humanity forever because they're going to die. Um, you know, their days are ended, so I won't have to quarrel with these people, or at least not an individual person for too long. There is, uh, so I'm going to go with God's spirit. My spirit will not quarrel with humanity forever. Um, uh, again, some of this is in hindsight. After I went through all these, I, I, there was an aha verse where it was clear to me that there is a meaning for this word in Genesis that, that the word spirit is appropriate to use. Um, and so uh, I think I'm going to go with spirit. I should note, however, that there is another option. Uh, the RSV translates this, my breath will not, not abide in a person forever. Uh, his, he only lives 120 years or she only lives 120 years. Um, and the, if, if that were the right translation, then we would go with breath. My breath is not in humanity forever. I don't, I didn't go with that because I think the word quarrel, um, I just don't think abide is a natural definition for that word. I think, I think uh, quarrel, uh, strive is a better definition. And so, um, so I, I went with spirit as the translation here. Okay. Now these three all are in the flood story and they all are the same basic phrase. God will destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life. Okay, this is breath. Clearly means breath. Uh, very clear for breath. We might say, aha, it means breath. Have we had a breath one yet? Um, we have a spirit one and we have a breeze one, but we haven't had a breath one. Okay, we haven't had a breath one. So this is my aha verse uh, for, uh, for breath uh, because it clearly is talking about the breath of life inside of a person. Um, okay, so we have three definitions. And what we're going to find, you know, is, what I found as I went through Genesis is these three definitions, I think, will suffice uh, to define uh, the word uh, ruach in Genesis. So sometimes it means uh, wind, sometimes it means breath, and sometimes I think spirit is a fine translation for it. Well, let's keep going. So I have all my aha moments. I have all my definitions uh, the rest is just filling in the blanks. God makes a wind blow over the earth. Okay, so there's the wind definition. Um, Esau's choices brought bitterness of spirit uh, to Isaac and Rebekah. Um, this seems to be spirit, um, whatever it is. Now, again, we need to be careful not to uh, read in our understanding of spirit. So, um, you know, in our in our later Christian understanding, our later New Testament understanding, our later Greek understanding, we tend to see our spirit as, you know, we're body and spirit, and the spirit is the part of us where our personality and our our memories maybe and our, our eternity, you know, you know that but but there is a whole lot of reading into the text here. Genesis doesn't have that view of spirit. Um, the spirit of Isaac and Rebecca is is something like the I mean, it's we shouldn't think of it metaphysically, um, in the way that we've come in the New Testament and in Greek influence to think of spirit as some part of me that survives death. That's not at all what Genesis is saying here. There is no evidence from Genesis that Genesis thinks of this spirit as surviving death. Um, rather, um, probably like Ecclesiastes, the, our breath returns to God. Um, our spirit returns to God, so to speak. Um, and so uh, that that's an overread. If we really want to listen to the text, we have to let the text speak in its own categories and its own terms. Bitterness of spirit is an expression uh, that that talks about whatever the the you know the 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 that is inside of Isaac and Rebecca. It you know they were bitter in their in their feelings, in their attitudes, in their demeanor. Um, so, but in any case, this verse confirms to me that spirit is a legitimate translation for this word. And going back to like the first instance in Genesis one two, I'm going to go with spirit of God. 
Um, so this reference seems to confirm to me that Genesis can think of Ruach distinctly as something that is, it seems a little bit more than breath in the way that Genesis is talking about it. So I'm going to call this Aha for, for spirit. Okay. Pharaoh's spirit was troubled. Again, spirit again. Joseph has the spirit of God. I'm going to go with spirit. Now breath, you know, breath is not far. This, the, 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 the use of, of Ruach as spirit in Genesis is not far from breath. It really isn't. Um, but it seems to be distinct enough, I think, to give it its own definition. Uh, Genesis 45, 27. The Ruach of Jacob revives when he gets new, good news. Again, I'm going to go with spirit um, in this case. So, summary of our little short word study of Ruach in Genesis. It seems to me that in most cases, I'm, I added them up. This is a popularity contest. And the number one use of the word Ruach is the spirit of a person or the spirit of God. And those are the places in Genesis where it seems to be. Um, three times in Genesis, spirit seemed to mean breath. And then two times in Genesis, um, spirit meant seemed to mean wind or breeze. Do you get it? This is how I would say you go about doing a word study, even though this is just a very small uh, part of doing a word study.